do I have a surprise for you? And here is the surprise. Guys, this is my 2023 Honda XR 150L. I just picked it up from the dealer this morning. I got it from Schroeder's Honda in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Shout out to them for being so helpful. I rode it to work today and now I'm on the beautiful Blue Ridge Parkway. And I wanna take it for a ride here. I'm gonna ride some pavement, kinda of talk about some of the things I'm liking, and then we're gonna hop on some dirt and get a feel for how this handles off-road. Let's get on the pavement and then we'll hit some dirt in just a second here. I had this pretty warm, so it should start right up without the choke. Perfect. It's really super nice, guys. It's really quiet. It starts right up. I had to half choke it when I picked it up this morning. No big deal. Um, started right up. I feel very at home on it. It feels very much like my Honda CT125, but more like the seating position of my BMW. All right, here we go. So like I said, I'm on the Blue Ridge Parkway in North Carolina, just outside of Asheville. And we are riding towards Bent Creek. Now, the Blue Ridge Parkway has a speed limit of 45 miles per hour, and this has no problem at all. This is how I go to and from work every day which is one of the reasons that I found it really appealing, uh, being that it can do 55 with ease, which is what everyone's saying, and that it has a top speed somewhere up around 70. I think one of the things I'm really excited for though is to ride it on dirt. And we're gonna get after that in just a second here. It sits fairly high. It's not like a proper full-size dual sport, like a DRZ or like a CR, uh, CRF or anything like that, but it's very comfortable. Like I'm six foot two with really long legs and I have no problem sitting on this. Uh, has a dinky little horn, but uh, that's kind of that's kind of part of the fun, you know what I mean? All right, so we're about to get off road here. <laughs> that's smooth. I like this. So this thing is really wow It tracks really nicely. Honestly, I feel very comfortable Yeah, I feel super comfortable. This is really soft plush suspension. I was worried about the size of the front fork now granted It's bigger than the Honda CT125, but it's a 31 millimeter fork um, whereas like the new KLR650 is a 41 millimeter fork and I thought maybe that would matter but it really doesn't seem to this feels quite comfortable now maybe over bigger rougher terrain it might be a problem but right here right now it feels good we're right here and we can kind of stop and talk about this thing a little bit it looks like somebody was camping here and you're not supposed to camp in Bent Creek but I'm not a snitch, so whatever. All right, let's take a walk around this thing. So right now I have the headlight on. You can see it's pretty bright for what it is. It's not LED, it is halogen. It does not have LED turn signals either, but they're plenty bright. They work just fine. It has a super, super simple dash. No tachometer, just a speedometer, turn signal, headlight, neutral indicator. Somebody said that these are the same controls off of the Navi, but I can't really confirm that. I don't have one and I didn't take note when I was at the dealer. Has the little flip gas thing. My dad actually used to have a Suzuki Boulevard that had something very similar. So it's very reminiscent of that to me. The little Honda badge is up top here. Nice little lollipop mirrors. 
I'm pretty tall and I can see out of them pretty well. It's nice that it comes from the factory with this big rear rack. If you buy a CRF or something like that, you don't get that. It's funny to me that it does have passenger foot pegs, but they did make it a two-seater, which is really cool. Uh, the seat is very, very comfortable. And I'm six foot two, and I have really long legs, and I have no problem at all uh, sitting on the driver's seat. I mean, I don't feel cramped or anything like that. The only thing I would say is I probably will get handlebar extenders um, or risers maybe uh, just to lift it up a little bit so that it's more uh, positioned like my BMW, which I really like. It is 150 cc's and it is carbureted. You can see the keen carb right there. Um, other people have mentioned the welds. You can see they're kind of rough, but I'm not super concerned about it. If anything, they just look burly. Um, I don't think they're going to be a problem at all. Um, it is rear drum brake, but front disc brake. And the front disc brake works really well. It's a two piston, and you can feel it. I mean, I had to stop short this morning, and it was super powerful. I was really pleased with how well it worked. Uh, spoked wheels, 17-inch rear, 19-inch front. So it shouldn't be too hard to find tires for it. But honestly, the tires that are on it... I didn't even really take note of what they are. They're CSTs. They're really nice. They have a lot of bite off-road. Bent Creek isn't exactly smooth. It's pretty choppy, and I haven't felt like I was going to slide at all. It's really quite nice. The choke for the motorcycle is on the carburetor on this side, on the left side of the bike. You got to reach through and flip it. It's got a half position and a full position. I put it on half this morning to start the bike when I picked it up from the dealer and it fired right up. The petcock is right here. It's in the on position right now. That is the off position and that is the reservoir position right there. I do intend to run it completely out of gas to see what the actual range of it is. Um, they're saying that it can get almost 350 miles out of a tank. We will see. I don't know. So far, I'm pretty impressed with it. Things that I definitely want to change. The foot pegs. These are very, very small. Um, something bigger and wider. Uh, something more supportive for actually riding off-road. Standing while you're riding off-road would be good. Uh, like I said, the handlebar risers for me. And maybe at some point adding like a little windscreen or something like that just to keep some wind off of my neck and chest. But otherwise, I'm really digging the setup so far. Might be kind of hard to see, but the rear shock is located right there. The chain is a 428 chain, just like the Honda Trail. And then my dealer was kind enough to put a little, uh, little battery tender charger on for me. And it does look like there's a helmet lock right here, which is really cool. And I presume that it's keyed the same as the ignition, which is really nice. These tires have really great traction. They're very quiet on the road as well. So far, I'm really digging it. I'll fire it up so you guys can hear it. It's pretty muffled, and it's pretty quiet when you're riding. I did roll up to a couple stop signs before. I couldn't tell if the bike had stalled or not. It did not. It's just super quiet. Some of you are probably going to want to add a pipe in the future. <laughs> but anyway, we're burning daylight here. So let's hop on this dirt road, ride towards home, and we'll see how this thing handles off-road. Like that kind of thing, no problem. This motorcycle feels very at home through here. And it's choppy, I mean, it's not easy going.
The clutch is very smooth and the power is very even through it. It's quite easy to tell when you need to shift. And honestly, these tires are incredible. I use Shinko 244s on my Honda CT125 and yeah, I mean, these aren't, you know, knobby like that, but they're certainly, they certainly perform well. This is all very loose. You can see my seating position on this is really quite upright. It's easy to maneuver the bike from this position. I don't feel uncomfortable. I can grip the tank quite well with my legs. I don't feel like my feet are super far back either. Now I think the seat height on this is listed as like 32.8 or something. Um, for reference, the Honda Trail that I have, the CT125, is 31.5, so this has a taller seat height. Additionally, I have a BMW F650, and uh, the seat height on that is 31.9, so this sits quite high, but for me, with like a 34-inch inseam, I can flat-foot it quite comfortably. I think if you're a shorter rider, you're going to want to watch for that, if you're not super comfortable not being flat-footed, but... Um, it's really quite manageable, especially for a tall person like myself. I'm really super excited to do some off-road adventures with this. I already have a couple accessories picked out. I'm definitely going to get a skid plate for it to protect the engine case. Definitely going to... Um, get those bigger pegs like I was talking about and I'll probably put handlebar risers with maybe a uh, a little bit wider of a handlebar for myself although this feels pretty comfortable this feels like being on my mountain bike so down through here I'm not I'm not throttling through it I'm just rolling I rolled over a big rock before and everything feels really good like I'm not slipping I haven't needed to dab my foot or anything. And let's do a quick. Totally in control. Oops. <laughs> Too low a gear. Yeah, this is really super cool. I feel really comfortable on this. I really like the way that this is handling. Yeah, this thing rips. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have so much fun on this. If you're buying this for speed though, you're buying the wrong bike. If you want something fast and super powerful, go buy a CRF 300. This is, it's peppy, I think is the right word for it. It's not fast by any stretch of the imagination. It's not super powerful. It's just a good, solid adventure dual sport. This is the kind of thing that you could ride, you know, a couple hundred miles with your buddies over a course of a weekend 
and keep up just fine and be totally comfortable. I'm gonna pass this guy. And it'd be no big deal. Did fine through that big bump I just hit. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty impressed by that. That's really comfortable off-road. The position is right. The weight is what is perfect. I mean, it feels nimble, but it's it's not sloppy. It's just perfect. Very happy with this. Very smooth bike. Very, like, just very nice riding bike. Honda did a great job with this. My first impression of this is nothing but positive. Very stoked on this bike. I can't wait to take this on a longer adventure. Let's get a little more pavement on this and then we'll wrap this video up. Alrighty, we're back on pavement. Give this thing a little bit of gas and it responds. I mean, it's fast for what it is. It's not fast, fast, but it's fast for what it is, which is perfect. I think just like the Honda Trail, being realistic with yourself is the most important thing in purchasing one of these. Knowing that it's a 150 is going to save you a lot of heartache. Um, if you're buying this and you're gonna try and get on the highway to commute into work or something like that, you're not gonna have a great time because this is not a highway bike. But if you're riding B roads or dirt roads or just backcountry roads or maybe some, you know, two lane roads or a four lane, you know, like small highway with like a 50 mile per hour speed limit, you're in the gold, I think. Um, at least so far in my testing. Um, will I take this on the highway? No, absolutely not. That's, that's what the BMW is for. That's what the big 650 is for. Well, I think that's gonna do it for my first impressions. What I'll say is, this bike is really nice. This is smooth. It's a heck of a lot of bike for not that much money. I think it's a really reasonable deal. And I'll be surprised if Honda doesn't sell a ton of these. Um, definitely something that you're gonna wanna upgrade. Um, for example, you're gonna wanna add a skid plate of some kind, probably bigger pegs. Um, and maybe if you're tall like me, maybe like risers or like a, a bigger handlebar, something like that. But ultimately, this thing is pretty awesome for the price that you pay for it, and I'm super happy with it. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm gonna have other videos coming, specifically a comparison between my 2021 Honda Trail 125 and this. They're kind of in that same category of like weird dual sport, off-road, adventure touring kind of stuff. Um, so I will be doing that video and I'll have a bunch more content with this uh, really super cool bike coming very soon. If you guys have any questions about the bike, please drop me a comment, check out my Instagram. I'm very responsive. I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. If there's any tests that you want me to do with this thing, please let me know. I'd love to do, uh, you know, uh, a viewer request video. So if you guys have anything at all, drop it below. And until next time, peace.